This week on Outdoor Bound TV, we travel to famous Lake Winnebagoshish in northern Minnesota for a little northern pike action with our friend Bill High of Bowen Lodge and longtime friend and guide Jeff Sundin. On this trip, we're not targeting the monster pike. We're looking for eater fish on light tackle. Then Jeff shares with us his recipe for blackened pike at a backyard fish fry by the lake. Unbelievable. Look at that walleye. There we go. Right there. There we go. Pretty incredible. That's what I'm talking about. Very intense. Look at the size of that northern. Awesome, awesome. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission by Matthews and Vortex Optics. I'm going to be just like my dad. Strong like him, smart like him, and now that I have my mission menace, I'm going to be a bow hunter just like he is. This bow is my beginning, my future. This is my mission. Featuring an advanced perimeter weighted dual cam system, the Mission Menace provides power for the hunt and adjustability to fit any beginner, young or old. Visit missionarchery.com to find an authorized retailer near you. Mission by Matthews. You are the first to rise, first to teach, to get your hands dirty and lend them. You're first to protect. As a hunter, being first is a big part of who you are. And we are first for you. The single most influential hunter's rights and conservation organization in the world. Join like your way of life depends on it. Junior! What's up, what's up, what's up? Do I know you? Dewey Ryder. I'm the new you, I'm the new model, I'm the upgrade. Oh, nobody told you? No. Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be driving race cars around super fast in circles, riding wild Mountain Dew all the time. I'll take this, thank you. You just go on, just go ahead and clear frame. Exit frame, Dale. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. I'm all the way up. This is weird. I'm all the way up. Big Bear Down has all the supplies you need for this year's hunting season. Check out our large selection of 10 point and Horton crossbows and accessories. Big Bear Down has added more hunting gear, deer attractant, mineral and accessories to meet your needs. Check out our selection of handguns, shotguns, ammunition, rifles and more. Big Bear Down has the quality name brand products you can depend on again and again. Big Bear Down conveniently located on Highway 13 in Abbotsford. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. You know, normally when we go pike fishing, we're looking for the biggest, baddest pike that we can find. Well, on this week's show, we're doing something, well, just a little bit different. We head to Minnesota's Bowen Lodge with lodge owner Bill High and good friend and guide Jeff Sundin. Now we're in search of eater pike on light tackle. Now the guys are getting ready to head out on the famous waters of Lake Winnebagoshish. Let's join them right now. All right, Jeff, how, uh, how do you want to rig up this morning? We can get usually all the fish we want on a jig and minnow. I got some 30 pound fluorocarbon, and this will take care of about 90% of any problem with the bite offs. Another thing that I really like about the fluorocarbon, while you're fishing, we're looking for pike, that's what we want to catch, but that is so clear that the walleyes don't see it and shy away from it. So even though we're fishing for pike, we're still in the game. We can always catch a bonus walleye or two while we're at it too. Put a few of these minnows out here where they're easy for us to reach. You could use a rainbow, shiner, 
fat head. In fact, I've got some little golden shiners with me too. As long as it's compact enough to fit on the jig and doesn't get so carried away that you have trouble working it, I just put it right down the mouth, out through the top of the skull, and that thing is ready to go. Here we go. That didn't take that long. As soon as we got right on the top of those rocks. Just about right. Nice. Wow. There is, there is one nice thing about these, every one of them. It doesn't matter how long they are. Look at how broad that fish is. They grow so fast, even a fish that's not all that long. I'm gonna check this one. I have a feeling that's a slot fish right there. 25 inches, yep, we'll have to put that one back. But that physique, wide body, short like that, that fish has got potential to grow up to be like 25 pounds if he wants to. We're gonna put him back in. Let's try to get another one out here. Good job, Jeff. You know what I think is gonna be really interesting to see how this new slot plays out out here. There's so many fish in the lake right now, they're really encouraging us to try and get some small ones out of there and that helps allow the big ones to grow even bigger. So you could have, theoretically, you could have a, a trophy pike fishery and still have a place where you can go and get a lot of fish to eat at the same time. Could turn out to be a good deal. You're allowed 10 fish under 22 inches or you could have two fish that were above 26, but every fish between 22 and 26 will be released no matter what lake. Here's a bite right here. There's another one. This one might be one of those eating size, it feels like. That's just a, that's a perfect example of what we're talking about right there. That fish is probably about 20, 21 inches. The mindset that they have to be big to be an eater is completely false. That's 21 inches. That's the ideal eating size fish right there. That's gonna, we're gonna blacken that one for dinner tonight. We're gonna show you how delicious those things really are. I'm gonna slip that one in here. Get another minnow. Let's get after them. All right. Tell us, you know, why you picked uh, the Deer River area to settle into. We took uh, 50 mile radius circles and drew them around every little town in Minnesota and then counted to see how many lakes were within the circle. I, I didn't actually say I want to go be a guide on Winnebagosh. I selected the area that had the most lakes in it. And this has been an awful reliable lake over all those years. Things change a little bit from time to time, but there's always something to do when you come here. When you think about it, it's really your lucky day because you get to watch me figure out how to get myself out of it. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> there he is. Oh, you got him. That, I guess that made a difference. Get rid of that open water that we were fishing get up in the weeds a little bit that's a nice pike right there a little bait substitution might be paying off here too how's that one look for you that's another nice big fat northern pike right there got him just right that one is 26 and a half. You want to save one of those for blackening for tonight? Make a nice blackened pike out of it. When we moved away from the rocks and got into the weeds, the minnow, when we cast out and let the, the thing fall down, they'll still eat the minnows, but it forces you to fish them just a little faster. So I just took a plain twister and just kind of thread that onto the hook like that. What that allows me to do now 
I can take that little twirl tail and as it's falling down into the weeds, it's always working for me. So even if I'm not jigging it while it's falling, it's fluttering. And a lot of times those fish will pick that thing up on the fall. And now that we got one on it, we're gonna put one on Bill's too and try to do the same thing with his. Well, it's light tackle and he jigs like this. Wow. One of the things about it, there's a bunch of ways to fish pike. You can come out here and be really sophisticated if you want to. Bring big tackle, musky rods and everything. You'll catch pike doing that too, or trolling. But the thing of it is, you show up, you don't have everything that you think you're gonna need for pike fishing. You've already got this stuff in your boat. If you came to go walleye fishing or even crappie fishing, you've got a six foot rod, six pound line, you got some little jigs minnows, twister tails, and anybody can reach into their tackle box and pull out something that will work for this job. Oh, there he is. There's another one right in the weeds. I'll fish in Lake Winnipegosh today with my friend Bill High, who's got Bowen Lodge, and we're looking for some pike. Kind of hungry. We're thinking about having some black and fish tonight. There, we're getting nice fish like that. Things have changed a little bit. We're pulling those out of the weeds. Bill, that one's going to have to go back. That's 25 inches. Another nice. Every fish we've caught today has been just like that. Here we go. There you go. All right. Just a classic Winnie Pike right there. Fish, this one looks just about right, don't you think? Perfect, perfect. Oh, double check. Oh, oh. He's there. Well, there we go. They can't, they can't all be real big ones. But you know what? The whole point is to get fish to eat. And they don't have to be big ones. We're going to take that one in. Use that for our last fish. We'll get our fish fry going and call it a night. How's that sound? Now don't go away because right after the break, Jeff shares with us an easy technique of how to remove those pesky Y bones when you're cleaning pike. Then it's off to the backyard at Bowen Lodge for a lakeside black and pike fish fry with friends. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants and Mountain Dew. No matter what you're chasing on the ice this winter, Acme Tackle has you covered. From the innovative Hyperglide and Hyper Rattle series, to legendary Castmaster, Rattle Master, and Sidewinder Spoons, or the all new professional gray tungsten series, Acme Tackle has what you need. Visit acmetackle.com to check out our full product assortment. Acme Tackle rattles louder, glides further, and glows brighter. Get hooked up with Acme Tackle. Optimizer by HHA Sports. The Optimizer Kingpin marks the third generation of archery's number one selling single pin adjustable sight. On the range or in the field, start ruling your kingdom today with the Optimizer Kingpin. The Optimizer Speed Dial. Extend the range and accuracy of your crossbow. To the yard accuracy with a single reticle. Simply range, dial, and shoot. All Optimizer sight systems are made in the USA and carry a 100% lifetime guarantee. Ask for Optimizer at a dealer near you. At Kobe Chrysler Center, there's a reason why our customers keep coming back. It started with a welcome and a handshake, and throughout the years has developed into so much more. In addition to Kobe Chrysler Center's five-star service, unmatched selection, and knowledgeable, low-pressure sales staff, we have become a trusted partner to our guests, their families, and the communities we call home. Now we welcome you to come experience the Kobe Chrysler Center Advantage. Welcome home to Kobe Chrysler. Room Motors has been serving Central Wisconsin since 1947 and offers a full line of quality Kubota tractors, mowers, and RTVs. Let the knowledgeable staff at Room Motors help you select the best Kubota RTV for you and your family. From weekend food plot maintenance to projects around your yard, you can count on Room Motors for all your quality Kubota products at both convenient locations. Room Motors, take the short drive up Highway 45 in Anigo and Burnhamwood. 
You know, one of the things about Northern Pike, everybody probably really likes to eat them. They just don't know that because they've heard stories about how hard it is to get those bones out of there. Well, we targeted some nice fish that are just the right size for eating. They're small. And we're gonna do two things. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get the bones out, and then we're gonna cook some up, and we're gonna show you how delicious they are to eat. It won't be any big problem. This is something that you can do. It takes a couple of times practicing, but we're gonna go nice and slow, lay it all out. We'll explain it step by step, and you'll see you can do this yourself. When you make this first cut, just punch right in behind the, the back, right alongside, and you'll feel your knife stop when it reaches the backbone. That's as far as you need to go. Turn your knife, go sideways, right along the backbone. No, no fancy moves. When you get right down past that fin, you can pop out and go the rest of the way through. The bones are basically from here on up. Now I'm gonna turn my knife and go back the other way and clean that cut up a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'll just turn that for a second. You can see I've got that exposed. And here's the little secret. We'll show you a little detail on this. That pattern that you see in the meat is the same thing as a grain in a piece of wood. If you've ever worked with wood of any kind, you know that you follow the grain. And that grain, the rib bones, the grain that's in the flesh all lays exactly the same direction as the grain of the Y bone, which is very easy to figure out how to remove as soon as you follow that grain. Think of it as working with a piece of wood. So we'll start by cleaning that one up a little bit right there. There's a row of white bones. You'll see them. They run up and down vertically and just for a short time, about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And we're gonna make one cut right above the top of that. And you can actually hear the knife click on it a little bit. I don't wanna cut through them, I just wanna get down to them. And you can see that thing kind of bouncing on those bones. Now this grain that I talked about that runs through that flesh, that's the same direction that the Y bone runs. So I'm just gonna lay my knife at an angle about 45 degrees, maybe a little shallower, make a cut there and follow that same grain. And now I can peel this back a little bit and I can actually see the Y bones underneath there. Now that I've got that pattern exposed and I can see the bones, I'm gonna go on the other side. I can already see it, so I know it's real easy to copy the angle. And we're gonna make a cut that way. We're gonna use the knife to give us a little bit of back pressure. And we're just gonna slide those right out of there just like that. And now this is completely boneless. We're ready to take the skin off of it, rinse it up a little bit. And this fish will be just as good as any walleye or perch or crappie that you've ever eaten, especially the way that we're gonna cook it tonight. We'll set this one aside, do the other side of it. Flip the fish over, do the same exact thing. One cut behind the back of the head right here and my knife will stop right there. You can feel it when you hit the backbone. We're gonna turn and we're just gonna follow right along that backbone. And right when I get to those fins, I'm gonna go ahead and punch through. Same as before, I'm gonna go backwards, clean my cut up a little bit. And now we've got the basics covered. I can open that back up and I can see that pattern, I can see the top of the bones, so I'm ready to go. I'm just gonna cut right around the ribs now instead of through them, just like we did on the other side. You may have a little different program for getting to this point. You've cleaned walleyes or you've cleaned perch or crappies and you use an electric knife and you want to cut through this rib bone. Now I've chosen to go around it because I can do it with this knife pretty easily. But if you get th to this point using a different method, that's okay. You don't have to do it my way. This just happens to be the way I clean it. Once you get to the rib bone or the Y bone, that's going to be a little different. Now we're going to have to do it my way. So we'll give this a flip over. 
on this side. I've gone around that fin, so I'm gonna pull it out of there. Discard that. And I'll just scuff that up again, just enough so that I can see that row of bones that's sticking up vertically. I'm gonna make my cut straight down above the top of that towards the back. And then I'll make maybe one more just to make sure I got all the way without cutting through them. And I'll follow my grain. There's the, the grain of that flesh is going that way and the bone lays the same way. I'm gonna lay my knife like this. Peel it towards the back. When we're just getting ready to cook these, it wouldn't necessarily matter if I went all the way through, but if you want a nice pretty filet, stop short and don't cut through that back. Leave about the last quarter inch or half an inch connected. Now I've got that exposed just like I did on the other side, and you can actually look in here and see the rib bones. So I'm just gonna copy that angle, same as I did. Now on this side, for me, it's easier if I turn it just so that I'm drawing the knife the right direction. Same thing. Clean that up a little bit. Get a hold of that roll. Use my knife just to put a little bit of back pressure on it and slip that out of there. Just like that. And now there's the other side. We're back to having a nice clean fillet. All the rib bones are gone, the Y bones are all gone. As soon as we skin that and clean it up, that's ready for the table right there. The only thing left to do is take the skin off. That's the same thing that you would do for filleting any other fish. I like to get a hold of the tail. Some people use a fork. I've got a little fish scaler, just something to give me a little bit of grip. And then obviously, we're just gonna peel that skin right off of the fillet. grip that way. Dip all the way through. And now we'll rinse that off, cut it into about three pieces, and then we'll show you how we're gonna cook it. This is as simple as it gets. We're all set. We've got the flays cleaned, and then I cut each one of them. The smaller size ones I cut into three pieces, and we had one larger fillet that I cut into four pieces. All we have to have, about a quarter of a cup of, uh, I use canola oil. It can be whatever you want. All that's gonna do is help us get this stuff, the blackened seasoning. We're gonna put about two tablespoons of that in. There's our whole recipe. Take a bag. I split this into two, about 26 fillets, but I'm not gonna put them all in here at once. About half of that, I'd say two decent sized fish we're gonna put the oil right into the bag. We're gonna put the blackened spice right into the bag. Seal it up. And we're just gonna shake that until we've got everything nice and mixed up. You can even let it sit in the bag for a little while if you want to. But this is our final process. We'll just let that sit and rest for a little bit get everything nice and coated. The oil holds the spice to the filet. We're gonna cook in a dry pan. There won't be any oil in the pan at all. This will take about five minutes to cook, so we're gonna wait till we've got all the rest of the food ready to go, and then right at the end, we're gonna put these in, and we'll be set to go. So we've got the filets rested up a little bit. I've got the pan nice and hot. You can see you wanna do this outside because it's gonna get a little smoky, but you can see what we've got here. Got just the oil that's holding those spices on the outside of the fish. The pan's smoking hot. We're just gonna drop those in and sear them. The whole thing takes about five minutes. As Soon as we've got these cooking, we're gonna get somebody to dish up a plate and come on over and we'll see how it came out. Okay, all right. Who's next? Okay. Awesome. 
Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Brewpub Pizza and Kalen's Fishing Baits. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lata Matza Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lata Matza Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. What we chase cannot simply be caught. And what propels us takes far more than fuel. The distance we go is never measured in miles. And we find there's always more at the end of the line. Your moment is out there. Find it. Since 1957, Meyer Buildings has offered full design and project management for your farm, equestrian, commercial, and storage building needs. Our recreational building line specializes in the design and construction of affordable, remote area buildings for the outdoorsman. Whether it's a hunting cabin, lake home, workshop, or commercial facility, Meyer Buildings will design and build a building that is uniquely tailored to your needs. My name is Jeff Meyer from Meyer Recreational Buildings. Call us today for a better way to build. We handle your races, your jumps, and your trails. Isn't it time you give your daily driver the same love? Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by leading industry standards. And now, ordering Amsoil is even easier. Simply log on to qcamsoil.myamsoil.com and have quality Amsoil products delivered right to your door. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Rapala and HHA Sports. Wow, does that look good. Not too bad a way to spend the day on the lake, is it? I guess. Fresh pike right out of Lake Winnie. Very much. Awesome. Jeff, thanks a lot for taking us out to Lake Winnie today. You bet. No Folks, problem. Folks, if you're interested, Jeff's information is on the screen. He's fishing every day out here on Lake Winnebagosh. And as always, if you'd like to join our friends at Bowen Lodge, all the information is right on the screen. Give them a call. They'd love to have you stop by. And we hope that you'll join us again next week. And we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the Midwest, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. The Rainbow Fish Meditation Bill. They're 12 feet below you. Get on the information superhighway and tell them. Will them in the bite. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on the rainbow. rainbow fish meditation. Mm -hmm.